Hey, it's E.B. Moss, Head of Content Strategy for Media Village, and I am here for episode 45 at a live event. Well, live to me, this is recorded, and I'm sitting here with Kelly Davis, who's Senior Director of Marketing Strategy for the Ashley Home Store, and she oversees brand, media, finance, loyalty. Sounds like everything, Kelly. <laughs> Some days it feels that way. <laughs> well, I give you all the credit in the world because you've been running around getting ready for a really big event here at Goya Studios in Hollywood. Yes, it's been a it's been a long two days of uh, getting ready and prepping for this event, but we're excited. You seem very cool, calm, and collected. So congratulations on that. I'll, I will tell you exactly why this is such a big deal. These days, a lot of people have heard the word experience marketing, and it's something that is near and dear to the hearts of millennials and Gen Z. And so I thought it would be a really great experience to share a case study of a bona fide experience marketing event. And I'll tell you who it is. Thanks to Pandora, you guys are sponsoring an intimate concert with Neo. Yes, we're very excited. And it's going to be a, a great crowd. So we already got a line out front, so we're excited. Yeah, I saw that. I love slipping in on the VIP side. So we're going to get some insights all about what experience marketing is come to life. Hey, it's E.B. Moss, Head of Content Strategy for Media Village, the home of the Knowledge Exchange for those in media, marketing, and advertising. We cover everything here on Insider Insights, from addressable advertising to audio, programmatic to programming. So take a listen to Insider Insights at MediaVillage.com. So Kelly Davis, Senior Director of Marketing Strategy for Ashley Home Store, we're back. And there, as I mentioned, is a lot of research about millennials and Gen Z really loving having experiences almost more than stuff. Is that how this event came about? Tell me about it. It did. Um, we found that we weren't really reaching the, the younger demographic, and so we wanted to branch out a bit, start to build a little bit of brand awareness with a new generation of millennials and the soon and up-and-coming Gen Zs, and we wanted them to see the product. We know they're not naturally going into our stores, and we want them to touch, see the product, have fun, interact with it just like they normally would. And so that's why we, we started doing these events about two years ago with Pandora, and this wow. is our largest one yet. What are some of the other ones that you did? So we started with their franchise events and they're smaller, you know, there's about eight different sponsors within those events. And we kind of dipped our toe in the water. We went out to Nashville a few times with uh, Sounds Like Country, uh, with Jason Aldean, mm -hmm. uh, who else we had? We had Blake Shelton out there. Wow. Um, we went off to Chicago for a Pandora invasion, um, and now we're uh, now we're starting to do custom events. So we've brought it to a whole new level. So those are Pandora Live, correct? Yeah, I've I've seen those, and they look pretty hot. And so this one really lets your fans get up close and personal with a huge artist. Yes, I think you're expecting maybe what a thousand people all together. Correct. So we're uh, we're targeting a thousand general admission to see a you know a multi Grammy award winning artist Neo. So. Yeah, he has millions and millions of, of views, of hits. His social media followers are, of course, in the multi-millions. I'm very excited. He's been huge for about 10 years now. How did this particular one come about? As I'll, I'll tell you why I ask, because working with Pandora at Media Village, I understand that they really try to tap into their listener data and help ID artists who trend in certain markets. How did you identify Neo as one that was a, a aspiration for you to work with. So uh, we, to your point, we we help uh, look into the market demographics a little bit. Look what everyone's uh, listening to within the Los Angeles area, and uh -huh. we want to make sure that it's going to be someone that's a mainstream artist. In this case, we wanted to go a little bit bigger than an emerging or an established artist. And so, using some uh, technology from our dear friends at Pandora, they're uh -huh. able to let us know who really reaches our core demographic. And Neo was top of the list. And let's talk a little bit about what this whole launch is called. This is called Urbanology. I'm going to let you give a little plug for it. 
Uh, so Urbanology is our new product line that we're really excited to relaunch. We actually relaunch. Uh, introduced this uh, line in 2015, um, but we decided to come back with a whole new look. So mid-century modern is very trendy right yes, now. Yes, it is. And I own some. Yes, and it, it's amazing that it's made that uh, the resurgence there. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to add a little bit of a boho global flair, which is, again, very trendy. And so this is our next big launch, and we're really excited to see where it's going to go. And you've been with Ashley Home Store for seven years? That is correct, seven years. What did you do before that? So before that, I actually worked for a, a small advertising agency, not so small actually, was Zimmerman Advertising in sure. South Florida. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I started there in strategy and research and moved over to account services. And actually, Ashley Homestore was my client. So oh, yeah, I, I okay. traded sides. They brought the expert <laughs> over. They hijacked you. They did. The, there was a quote, you have a beautiful brochure that goes along with this, which I assume you worked on as part of the collateral. Yep. Okay. Um, and not so uh, surprisingly, you quote your CEO of Ashley Home Store. And I thought that this was kind of interesting, like a through line between what feels like Neo style, the artist, and Urbanology, the brand position. I'm going to read this. Um, it's described as being developed to let creativity run free with thoughtful and surprising combinations of color, texture, style, and history. Does that feel like, you know, the music has come to life with Neo? Does it feel like a reflection of what you're trying to launch? Exactly. It definitely does. And uh, we actually had a one-on-one -on -one tour with Neo earlier, this uh, today actually, about two hours ago, and he loved it. And this, he said this was his vibe. This is exactly what he has in his home. Uh, in particular, he said he loved more neutral tones, and uh -huh. he was going for that green, tuft uh, ottoman that we have in his dressing room. He absolutely loved it. I, I saw one. They have a beautiful display, like all sort of recreations of areas of homes that uh, you have, and I wanted to. If I had, could have fit that tufted little settee on the plane, I would have. <laughs> anyway, I swear this isn't a pitch. I just... I like this stuff. What can I tell you? So I also wanted to ask you when this hits stores and other things that you've done as a marketer to launch something as big as this whole new brand extension. Yeah, so uh, Urbanology officially launches on October 15th nationally in all stores. So you can find it on our website, ashleyhomestore.com or in any of the local stores. And then we actually started to dip our toe in the water last year with Maine and Mason, which was another lifestyle that we uh, actually launched. It was modern farmhouse look. Mm -hmm. So we took a stab at that last year in August and we did a smaller Pandora event. We went up to New York City and did a press event to really get a sneak peek. Mm -hmm. And that was really our first kind of dabble into this experience marketing from a product launch perspective. I see. and. How do you, where do you place media for this? What kind of channels do you use? And was it different for the, the sort of farm inspired versus the urban inspired look in terms of where you'll do launch media? Yeah, so we uh, we leverage a lot of digital. You know, we're really starting to make a, a huge digital shift, which is different from what our company traditionally has been involved in with the you know television side of our buy. Um, but we really went in hard with YouTube. We've seen a lot of success in YouTube lately, as mm -hmm. well as uh, social channels. So Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, we're really starting to build a presence there with our lifestyle launches. And uh, the targeting did change just slightly. We went mm -hmm. for a, a little bit more of a younger demographic when it came with urbanology versus our modern farmhouse which is more of your mom uh, that we were going for more of that family vibe right. okay given that this is such a big experience here as I said in an intimate setting there's going to be a concert you have like a hundred influencers mm -hmm. who are coming and all of the the setup inside the studios of the home recreation what will you consider a win for this experience marketing concert so uh, we went mass reach fast is kind of what we keep telling ourselves. Wait, say with it again. Mass reach fast? Exactly. Okay, so hashtag Urbanology okay. is what we want to be trending after this event. We want everyone to know Urbanology. Okay. And uh, obviously that's our big lifestyle launch here and that's what we really want to be taken away. But we do have a hard goal, 110 million earned media impressions is what we're really trying to achieve here. Again, just how do we get more exposure for our brand, Ashley Home Store, and start to change the mindset of who we are with that younger demographic. So it's really interesting to me because a lot of the conversations that I've been having with Insider Insights, this podcast, has been on the topic of awareness versus ROI. So 
it sounds like awareness is the key goal right now and then you're going to worry about sell through and conversion after the launch so we always want both that is how Who we operate Smart right answer. what what other brand doesn't <laughs> want that but yes awareness is is a big goal here changing the mindset that consideration piece with the younger consumer but at the end of the day we want them to buy the furniture so we do have a 50 percent off coupon for everyone that's going to be here at the concert tonight i swear i didn't know that but good to know now we're doing this as a podcast and I know it's your first podcast and you're doing incredibly well better than me on my 45th (laughs) Um, so I want to ask you also about voice so clearly audio is going digital what are you doing uh, with Pandora beyond this concert and how else are you using audio and and what do you think of sonic branding for example So uh, we're starting to dabble in sonic branding. Uh So that is something that we started to uh, just recently um, to work with Steve Keller with the Pandora team. Yeah. um, Starting that initial exploration. And we're really excited to see where that's going to take us as a brand. Uh But uh, streaming audio is a massive part of our overall buy. And we've seen a lot of success. We measure success with uh, store visits and a lot of factors. And we have the ability to measure Pandora streaming audio channels through placed and see what our actual incremental uh, lift is through store traffic. So huge success there. What about podcasting? So podcast, Uh you know, this is this is an interesting one. So we all believe in it. We Uh all listen to it. My entire team does. And we actually are going to do a test here as we enter Q4 with uh, some podcasts through Gimlet. So uh, we've selected four podcasts that we're going to dabble with and hopefully we'll see good success. All right. Well, we'll talk. I can tell you about that. Um, So I want to sort of wind things down a little bit and talk a little bit more holistically. Uh, I was recently at the ANA and and our last podcast interviewed three female CMOs. Um, Obviously, you're female. How has your path to this career um, been impacted in, in one way or the other? How hard has it been or, or easy as a female? I would say um, it's kind of middle of the road. It hasn't been too easy or too hard. Mm-hmm. I would say the furniture industry is traditionally a male dominant industry. Interesting. And so seeing more and more females enter uh, the marketplace within furniture has been very exciting over the past seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, it, Ashley Home Store has greatly evolved as well. I would say majority of our corporate office is uh, young females now, which is incredible to see. So Ashley is extremely passionate about bringing in a younger demographic, a more female demographic, and they definitely give us the ladder to grow, which is great, which is obviously I've had the opportunity to grow within the organization. So Uh it's been great. That's a great answer. And and that's good to know. So are there, is there any advice that you would give a brand marketer, male or female? (laughs) I would say just make sure you're passionate. You know, we, we have a motto at Ashley, passion, drive, and discipline. And that's really what we follow every day. And you have to be passionate about what you love. And Uh if you don't, your success won't be there. So what I hear you saying is that Ashley Home Store has done a good job at inclusion and diversity. Is there anything else that is purpose driven that the company gets behind? There is a lot that the company gets behind. Our founder, Ron Wanick, and our CEO, Todd Wanick, that is something that is important for them. And it's part of our purpose. We mm-hmm. say, you know, uh, we're here to inspire the love of home and enrich the lives of those around us. And when we say enrich the lives of those around us, it really goes back to the programs we have, such as Hope to Dream, which we're getting ready to celebrate, uh, giving our 100,000th bed to, to a child in need. And so we donate uh, beds to children who do not have one to sleep in. And that's just one of the many things that the Wanics do. But, you know, what, through their hope with uh, their, uh, with, we have City of Hope, we have Mayo Clinic, um, and we've done a lot with uh, local programs in the Wisconsin area as well, where our headquarters is. I love that. Uh, can you say the name again, and is there a URL for that? So it's a, uh, Hope to Dream. And if you go to Ashley Home Store forward slash hope to dream dot com, you can get there. That's fantastic. Parting words? Uh, no, th- I would say this has been my favorite podcast and my first <laughs> podcast, first, okay. but uh, hopefully it went pretty smoothly, <laughs> but I really do appreciate the time and I hope you have a phenomenal time at our event tonight. I'm and so excited. I, it, I'm just going to tell you that there's a big main stage outside. As we talked about, there are different rooms set up around here. You even have guitar heroes set up to yep. Just dance. We got a couple of those. We got yep. plants that play music plants and play music. a donut wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, the donuts, I'm going to make a beeline for that. So, 
Thank you so much, Kelly. It's been great talking to you. I'm so proud of your first podcast. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm E.B. Moss, and you've been listening to Insider Insights from Media Village. Check us out at mediavillage.com, and I hope that you'll subscribe to Insider Insights wherever you listen to podcasts.